Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. We will continue our discussion on uh, optimization. And uh, last time we saw this um, fundamental or basic algorithm in optimization for unconstrained problems where you are trying to minimize a function f of x uh, without any constraint on x, right? So, and we gave this algorithm called gradient descent, though we did not describe what a gradient is, but this is the algorithm that we described. And one of the key uh, equations or the key update rule of this algorithm was as follows. At any point xt, you want to update your current point to xt plus 1 because gradient descent is an iterative algorithm. The way we were doing it as follows, xt plus 1 equals xt plus some eta t times minus f dash of <coughs> xt, right. So, this was the simple update rule. <coughs> Basically, you take a gradient step or a derivative step, but then in the negative direction and you do not take a one unit step, but then you take a step size of eta t, <coughs> right. And we saw that this algorithm would actually do well um, <coughs> in the sense that it will find the right direction for some simple problems. And I kind of told that this is true in general, that this is a good way to uh, decide on the uh, direction, but I did not, you know, justify that, right. So now today, uh, what we are going to do is, we are going to ask the question, what is so special about minus f dash of xt? What is so special about this? <coughs> about minus f dash of x, right. So, why why would one want to intuitively uh, move in the direction of the negative derivative, right? So, what is the importance of this? So, this is the first question that we are going to ask today. And um, there are different ways to answer this and the way we will do it is as follows. So, I am going to remind you of um, a popular uh, um, equation which is called as the Taylor series. And uh, I will describe this and write the equation down and then explain what it means. Okay, so here is the equation. It might look a bit unwieldy, but uh, I'll try to explain what it actually means, right? So you want to compute the function or some function's value at some point, let's say x plus eta times d, and we will see why I'm writing it this way. Um, and Taylor series says that the function's value at a particular point can be expanded as follows f of x <coughs> plus eta times d times f dash of x plus eta squared d squared by 2 f double dash of x plus dot 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 <coughs> and so on, right. Um, so, what are we saying here, right? So, uh, of course, this is a this looks like a complicated um, way to expand functions and so on. Um, but what is the main fundamental reason, um, fundamental importance of this uh, Taylor series, right? So the importance is as follows and the importance specifically for an optimization point of view will become apparent in a minute. But um, in general, the importance is that uh, this, is a, this is a very beautiful equation which says that Let's say I want to understand the function's value or a function's behavior, which means the function's value uh, at some other point, right? So at some point x plus eta t, right? So um, we, we could simply call this some, some other point x dash. Um, maybe I won't use x dash. So maybe some other point um, x hat, which is x plus eta d. And we want to understand what is the value of this function at x bar which is x plus eta d and now Taylor series says that the function's value is equal to an infinite expansion. But what does this right hand side look like, right? So if you look at the right hand side and see where is the function being used in the right hand side, you will notice that it is being used here, <coughs> here, here and so on, right? So in each of these cases, you are looking at the function's value f of x you are looking at the function's derivative at x, f dash of x, second derivative at x, f double dash of x and so on. But then the key point to note here is that 
the evaluations of the function or its derivatives are all at x, right? <clears throat> so, which means that no matter which point x bar where I want to know how the function's value looks like, I can get that value if I know everything about the function at x. By everything, I mean that if you know the function's value at x, if you know the function's derivative at x, if you know the function's double derivative at x and so on, if you know complete information locally, right, so then you can compute the function's value at any point. And this is amazing in the sense that the function's complete description is present locally, right. So, if you know what is the slope, if you know what is the curvature, which is the second derivative and so on, at a current point, then you can compute the function at any other point. Right? So, of course, it has, be, it has to be scaled by eta square, eta d and so on. Some function of eta and d will come into picture because depending on which point you want to understand where what the function is doing. Right? <clears throat> so, in some sense, uh, local information gives global information. Right? So, that is the uh, fundamental idea of Taylor series, um, which means that if I know the functions Com functions behavior completely at a given point x, then I know the function's behavior at every other point, right. So, because you can always set eta and d accordingly to get any x bar so that you can evaluate the function at any other point. Now, <clears throat> for our purposes, for the purposes of optimization, uh, why is this useful? Well, let us see why this might be useful for optimization, ok. So, what are we trying to do? Uh, we are trying to understand the function's value at x plus eta times d. Now, what is so special about this form x plus eta times d? Well, we have seen in our gradient descent algorithm, you can think of eta as a small, you know, positive step size and d is some direction or in which you want to move, right. So, you want to move in the direction of d, but then you are only taking a step size of eta. Now, after I make this step size, right, so I am at a current point x and then I am, I do not know which d I want to pick. So, let us say I fix some d and then I move eta towards in the direction of d, then the function's value at the point that I will end up in will be f of x plus eta d, right. So, remember the gradient update rule, uh, which was something like <coughs> um, x t plus 1 was x t minus eta times uh, the derivative, we will come to that in a minute, but um, so instead of the derivative, let us say there is some general direction d in which I am trying to move and I am trying to ask what is the function value at this after I take this step. Now, we know from Taylor series that of course, this is going to depend on f of x plus uh, eta times d f dash of x and f double dash of x eta times eta square d squared by 2 plus and so on, right. So, this is an exact equality that is what I wrote earlier. Now, because eta is a small positive um, step size, sorry about that, because eta is a small positive step size, think of this as something like let us say 0.1 or 0.01, right. So, then what can we say about these values, right. So, if eta is very small, then eta squared is going to be even smaller. And then the third term is here is going to be eta depending on eta cubed, which is going to be much more smaller, right. So, which means that for small enough eta, everything after the first term, we can think of these as higher order terms. <clears throat> when I say order, it means that the, the order of the derivative and also this, the power of the uh, power by which you raise it, right. So, these are called as higher order terms and they are going to be really, really small, right. So, I can kind of very, for very, very small eta to intuitively understand this, I can kind of neglect these terms and then say that for small enough eta, right. So, for small enough eta, what happens, I can argue that, well, f of x plus eta d is going to be something like f of x plus eta times d f dash of x. I am kind of neglecting all these terms, <coughs> right. So, they are going to be really, really small. So, which means that I have not put an equal to here, I have just made it approximately equal to, it will be very close to this, right. 
<clears throat> now why is this useful well now let's look at uh, the f this implies what so this implies the following x plus eta d minus f of x i'm just bringing the f of x to the other side so this is approximately it looks like eta times um, d into f dash of x right so what has happened now <clears throat> i was in a current step x and what i have is f of f of x which is the function evaluation at the current point at the current point x right so that's what uh, f of x itself is now i decide on some direction i have not fixed what this direction is but let's say i pick some direction d and then i take an eta step in that direction i end up here and now this is the function evaluation at the new point at the updated point like along direction d right so i'm taking an eta step along the direction d and then i'm asking what's the function value and now <clears throat> this difference can be it's arbitrarily close to eta times d into f dash of x that's what your taylor series says after uh, removing the higher order terms <clears throat> now why is this useful now we are trying to minimize a function right which means I am at a current point and then I want to go to a different point where the function value is less than the current points value, right? So then if I am guaranteed this will happen, then I am kind of moving in the descent direction so that <coughs> my uh, function's value will keep reducing and hopefully I will reach the minimum, right? So that's the idea. Now, if that has to happen, then what should we, uh, what, what should happen to this quantity? <clears throat> if my function value actually ends up decreasing after I take a eta step in the direction of t, then I want I want f of x plus eta d minus f of x to be negative, right? Why do I want it to be negative? Which well, if it is negative, then it means that the function value has actually decreased after moving to x plus eta d. But then this may or may not happen for all directions, right? So, it, I mean, we don't know if it will happen for all directions, but then we have the power to choose this direction. So, which means that we want to choose a direction D such that f of x plus eta D minus f of x is less than zero, right? So, instead of to be negative, I'll just say this is going to be, we want this to be an equation less than zero. We haven't yet chosen a d, but then if we want a direction to do what we really want to do, which means that minimize the function as we go along the direction, then we want this direction to actually uh, satisfy f of x plus eta d minus f of x to be less than zero. But now Taylor series will say that this quantity f of x plus eta d minus f of x is actually well approximated by eta times d into f dash of x. Right, so which implies want d such that eta times d into f dash of x is less than zero. Right, <clears throat> we still haven't picked the d. Whatever d we pick, we better pick it such that eta times d f dash of x is less than zero. That's what our Taylor series expansion is saying. Okay, good. So now how does that help us? Right, so let me read, write that again, eta times d into f dash of x is less than zero. This is want this to happen. <clears throat> now remember eta is a small positive constant, right? So we don't have much, I mean here eta doesn't change the sign of this, uh, this term. Right? So, whatever eta you put, it's going to be a, posi a positive scalar, which means that if eta into d into f dash of x is less than 0, uh, equivalently, we can say that we want d times f dash of x to be less than 0. Right? So, want d such that d times f dash of x is less than 0. So, our Taylor series would tell us that 
as long as you are taking a very small step, you pick a direction such that d times f dash of x is less than 0, then the point where you will end up in will have a lesser function value than where you started, right. So, which means that we somehow have to pick a d which is which satisfies d times f dash of x is less than 0. Now, f dash of x <coughs> is just the slope uh, of a function at a particular point, right. So, in it's, a, it's like a single dimensional function. So, it's just a, this, it's capturing the slope, the derivative. <coughs> now, this derivative could be either positive or negative, right. So, which means that a single d cannot work for all possible points of x, right. So, because f dash of x could be positive or f dash of x could be negative, which means that the d that we choose will necessarily depend on the x somehow, right. And now, for the choice, now what could be a choice of d, right. So, what is a good choice of d which will <coughs> guarantee that d into f dash of x is less than 0? Well, for the choice of d which we have taken in our gradient descent algorithm as minus f dash of x, d times f dash of x simply becomes <coughs> minus f dash of x square, right. So, minus f dash of x into f dash of x minus f dash of x squared and we are we know for sure that this is less than 0, right. Um, un unless f dash of x is 0, uh, well if f dash of x is 0, we know that we have to stop there anyway, right. So, now this is the uh, reason why you can choose t as minus f dash of x. You can potentially move in the uh, gradients, uh, the derivatives negative direction and Taylor series would tell us that as long as your step size is small, then you are expected your to, your function value is expected to reduce, right. So, that is the rationale for choosing d as f dash of x.